Hello everybody, it's Dango here today. I've got a hat on today um, from the album cover of the beginning. Um, this is the exact same hat I wore to my um, gig that was photographed and put on the album. Because today we've got something a bit special for you guys. Today we are going to break down for all of you prog snobs out there disregarding faces uh, lick by lick riff by riff we're gonna do this in over the span of a couple videos it's going to be epic so without further ado here is the riff that we're going to learn today or just part of it yeah whatever we're gonna learn like the whole rhythm section today um at least the first part of it so here we go <laughs> Okay, so the left speaker is doing something completely different on the guitar than the right speaker. Today, we're gonna focus on the left speaker. This is just the bass rhythm part. If I were playing this live, this is how I would play it uh, rhythm rhythmically. So the main riff, it's very simple. This whole song is very simple, but it slaps my opinion. I'm the one who wrote it, so I can't really say much, but I think it's pretty good. All right, so the first riff, it starts on an E power chord here, right? I'm an E flat tuning. You can play this in standard, in any standard tuning. Um, but if you want to play along to the record, you have to tune down to, or tune up to um, e, e flat. Yeah, because it's, you know, death metal. Anyways. <laughs> All right, so the main riff, it starts like this. So you start in the E power chord, right? So you chug. Da, 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 and you go. So you go second fret on the D, open, second fret on the A, then first, and then back to the power chord. So you go. Now on the record, sometimes there's an open G string in that riff at the beginning especially um just uh you know just it it's very subtle but it's a it's a bit of a thing it's not like really a mistake i mean maybe it was at the time but i think it's a pretty cool addition to that sort of minor third feel you know so it's <laughs> that's pretty cool so you do that eight times i believe yeah, eight times. Four times without drums, four times with drums, and then you're gonna get into the verse. So the verse is a bit similar to the riff, um, except it's more of like a broken down thing. Think of Enter Sandman by Metallica, you know, how they go into the main riff, and then it's like a, you know, something like that, more of like a broken down section of the riff itself. But, so this is, this is what we've got here for the verse. So it's... That's very simple as it is. It's just a da 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 from the beginning of the riff, right? That's why it's similar. It goes. It does the da 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 twice. So it goes da 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 da. And then it goes. So that's a, the F power chord on the first and third frets of the E and A. So you go. And then we're going to go to this next part, which is sort of like a minor seventh uh that was a minor second right there the f but then in the context of the e this would be a it's like an inverted uh d power chord it's more of a darker d power chord uh i'm just hitting the open a and d strings um to get that sound i'm going and then i'm gonna hammer on back to the e power chord this time with my ring finger on the second fret of the d so it's gonna go I just 
just repeats itself over and over again. Um, it's, it's about four times, uh, I believe, in the first verse. Uh, the second verse, by the way, we'll get to it in a bit, but the second verse is actually cut in half, and the chorus is also cut in half too, but we're going to get to the chorus in a second here. First, we got to do the pre-chorus, because the pre-chorus is where things go change. This is a very heavily inspired uh, by Metallica kind of song, so this is, um, this is what happens next. So we go from the... From there, we go from there to a. It's a F F sharp. You know, it's going. So instead of doing the the final, you go. So it's it's kind of a cool change there up to the, you know, the half step above that major second kind of thing. So it goes. Uh, here's the last time with the last uh, loop with the verse. So that's basically the same thing we did on the E, same thing we did on the E, but with F sharp this time. So we're going to go from this, slide up one fret, then we're going to go down to the E, hammer back on the F sharp, so it's going to go. Now, each verse, the pre-chorus is the same length. Um, so we're going to do this. And then after the second time we do that, we're just going to straight up chug eighth notes on the F sharp. Um, and then that's what takes us into the chorus, you know, disregarding faces. Yeah, so we're going to go for the chorus on the left speaker, the left speaker and the right speaker. This is where they differ in sound and what they're playing in general on the guitar. So for the left speaker, and this is the main rhythm part, like I said earlier, the left speaker is going... <laughs> So all that is an A power chord in the 5th and 7th of the E and A string. So we go 2 on there, and then we go up a, a full step lower on the G power chord. So we go... I'm going to add some palm mutes in between that, right? So... Then what you're going to do, quickly move your ring finger from the 5th of the A to the 5th of the, of the D. And you're going to still keep your index finger on the E and A strings barring. So what we're gonna do there is we're gonna create an inverted C power chord. Um, it's sort of like a dark feel. You could just play it like this, you know, but in the record you play it like this with the extended uh, fifth, with a higher fifth. So you're gonna go chord, bass, bass, chord, bass, bass, chord, bass, bass. So the G is the bass note and the C and the higher G are the chord notes. So we're gonna go then back to So we do that four times for the first chorus. Um, and then we go back into the first, the second verse this time. So this is where it's cut in half. All right, so let's do a little bit of a, a recap of the of what we've got so far. So I'll play it a bit slower than usual. Um, so here's here's the from the verse all the way to the end of the chorus. All right, so let's go. 
For the chorus, you could do an A power chord up here or right here, it doesn't matter, but just, you know, for the sake of the left speaker, uh, it does a, a power chord up here just for the more thickness of the uh, lower strings, as opposed to, it's a bit of a different sound, it's very subtle sound uh, difference, but it's there. So that's the first verse and first chorus, all right? So if you got that down, now it's time to move on to the second verse and the second half of the song, if you will. All right, so it's the same thing as last time, right? So we're gonna go and accept it's cut in half, right? So we're going. So that's the entire first verse, pre-chorus and chorus. So what we're doing there, instead of playing the riff four times, you're gonna play it two times instead. All right, so, and then that'll take us into the pre-chorus. So we're gonna go. Then right up into the. Right, then there's the chorus right which is the same thing same thing just half the amount of time so we're going to do it two times instead of four times the last time so we're going to go now that little that's optional you could do that it's not on the record but it adds a cool little twist to it and then we're going to go the next section is the rhythm under the solo. Um, we're gonna break that down, it's very simple. Um, it's a bit of like a, it's a mix of like Drag the Waters by Pantera and a uh, whole lot of love by Led Zeppelin inspired thing, you know? So, but it's pretty cool. We're gonna break it down and we're gonna, that'll be it, I think, for the rhythm. All right, so we got, after the last um, disregarding faces, right? So that the goes into a man, So that's all of what's underneath the solo, right? So you could see we did that little thing there, right? So I'm gonna break that down. Uh, we also got afterwards, we have a chorus, four chorus, uh, I guess four times around the chorus section under the solo. So we're gonna go. And on that fourth time, we're gonna go. 
it's like an accenting accenting every few chugs on the e string so it's going to go and then we're going to go straight into the there that's when the solo ends right and both guitars left and right speaker go into the main riff again so you know right away at the beginning go That's just the main riff, you already know that. If you don't know it, then go back to the beginning of the video. That is the entire left speaker. Now, I will say the only difference with the right speaker, like, like actually, is that in the beginning, and with the main riff, it gets cut out for a little bit, and the bass is mainly on the right speaker. Even though it's in the middle, you hear it more on the right speaker because that right guitar is not in until right before the verse starts so right before the verse starts you got you know it goes around a couple times right on the drums when the drums go on you know so what that is i mean i'm using my index finger but you should really be using your um what's it called your ring finger to do this so it's 9th fret, ninth fret on the G, you're just lightly palm muting it, so. And you're sliding down, so you're going 1, 2, 3, 4, right? And that's right under the last, you know, riff. Um, in the beginning, though, right before the drums come in, the first four bars, the right guitar is playing um, before the drums come in, and then when the drums come in, it stops. And right before the verse starts, does the da, 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 da thing, and then we go into the verse, right? So there's no real difference in the verse, right, with the two guitars. You know, same thing. The... Etc. So, but then we get to the chorus, and this is why I said on the left speaker, you should most likely want to do this power chord instead of this power chord on the A, right? Because the A power chord on the right speaker is this one. And so what it's doing in the chorus, it's really, um, it's more of like a, it's the same chords. We're not, you know, reharmonizing it or anything. It's the same chords. It's just arpeggiated differently. So we got... the only difference really um so what that is that's an a power chord up here right sort of in the open position so you go then you're just gonna palm mute on that open a string and just chug and you're gonna go third fret of the e like this with your middle finger i think it's more of like a it's like a half step bend up and you're gonna go into this c major arpeggio which is sort of what we're doing um on here except with the left speaker it's a c5 so what we're doing here is we're going does that throughout the whole chorus even under the solo it does the same thing um etc that's really the only main difference, I believe, with the right speaker on the guitar. It's not that big of a difference, but it is audible on the recording. So I didn't want to leave that out, you know, have people confused. What is he playing on the right side? You know, it wouldn't be that hard to figure out, you know, theoretically. But I just wanted to make sure I didn't leave that out for you guys. Um, that's about it for this guitar lesson. Uh, that's Disregarding Faces, the rhythm section, left and right speakers. Uh, next video, we will break down the solo which i'm actually pretty excited for we got some wah pedal stuff in there 
um, a lot of cool stuff for you guys. So, yeah, that's about it. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys learned something from this video. Um, you know, when in doubt, just, you know.